Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is our Thursday lecture, and we are glad to uh, begin our uh, topic, DeVille University Global Commitment to Education in a Challenging World. And if you are interested in applying for bachelor's or master's program in U.S. and want to know all the aspects of the admission process and enhance your profile and master your application package, this is the right time for you. And I'm glad, and, uh, I'm glad to welcome our guest today from DeVille University. Uh, thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat and we'll be glad to answer them. And by the way, we also have a group of Ukrainian students who are right now in Duville University and they will share their experience of studying there. So thank you for joining and the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lori Clemo. I'm the president of Duville University and we are so glad to be joining you this morning for a conversation with our students. Um, Deerville University, just a little bit of background about us, is located in Buffalo, New York. So we're on the western part of New York State, about six hours from New York City. Our university has a 115 year history of being a university that is primarily focused on educating the underserved and marginalized populations. So for 115 years, we focused primarily on healthcare professions, uh, starting with the first programs that we had at the university, which was in nursing. Today, we offer healthcare programs at every level of degrees, from certificates to associates, bachelor's, master's, doctorate, and postgraduate work as well, too. The fields that we offer here at the university include nursing, physician assistant, occupational therapy, chiropractic, physical therapy, dietetics, and physician assistants. So we're very pleased to be with you today. I'm gonna to give you a little bit of background, not only on the university, but this particular initiative that we have, which is an international um, outreach for our university. So at the early part of 2022, as all of you know, when Russia invaded Ukraine, we were watching very closely of the horrors that we saw happening um, in Ukraine, particularly concerned about the students, faculty, and staff that were in like universities similar to the Utah University. We reached out uh, in early March to Mariupol University, uh, located on the eastern side, or I'm sorry, yes, the eastern side of Ukraine and had saw the devastation that uh, the campus had faced. Um, I reached the rector who had been very um, vocal internationally about the state of his university and the students and how students have been displaced from being able to continue their studies. I had several conversations with the rector about how Diego University may be able to help those students that were in need. So after several chats, and then reaching out to Education uh, USA in uh, Europe, we were able to connect uh, with some students in Ukraine that had an interest in coming to the United States to continue their, their studies because it, they had been disrupted. So we're gonna talk a little bit today about that process that we had from that initial outreach. And um, I have my staff here that was intricately involved and working with every student that has come to the Uville University from Ukraine. Um, and they're gonna to talk to you about the process, the admissions process, but also the logistics of moving students during a very, very difficult time, uh, challenging time in Ukraine to uh, move them from Ukraine to the United States into New York City. And then of course to Buffalo, New York, as I said, six hours away from uh, where they actually landed. So we'll go through those details and then I would love to have our students share their experience. It's been roughly five months since they've been um, in the United States here with us at UVO. And I think it's really important for you to hear of their transition and how that has gone uh, for them as well. Uh, so I would like to now introduce um, Becky Bielaf, who is our international student um, director and has been really leading this charge here at the university for us in making this offer to um, admit initially 10, but we have now 11, 
students from Ukraine to the United States to Deauville University, which includes um, full tuition waiver, room and board for our students for their undergraduate degree programs. So I'm going to turn it over to Becky and I'm happy to answer any questions as we continue the conversation. Hi, so I'm Becky Detliff. I'm the International Student Coordinator. Okay. Uh, so the admissions process, uh, the students apply to the college just as any other traditional student would. So they follow the traditional admission process. They completed the application. Uh, the next step was for us to reach out to the students who were uh, accepted. So typically an international student has to um, submit proof of English competency, and that's through additional testing. We wanted to remove any kind of barrier and make it as simple as easy as possible. So we, we removed that piece from the admission process and we just evaluated the English proficiency from, from Zoom calls. Um, it was easier for everybody. It was a one less test for the students, one less barrier. It was easier for us too to just talk and have a conversation than to look at test scores and evaluate someone that way. Um, so it was the first step. So after we were able to make sure that there was English competency, then I worked with the students to apply for their visas, um, completed their I-20 application. That was that was a lot of work. <laughs> Some of the students not, had a lot of internet issues, so I would be meeting with them, and it would be on times at night. I think Milana, it was like midnight for you one night, and you were like, "You have to be quiet because my family's sleeping." Um, so there was definitely barriers that are not always there for the traditional international student. Um, so just kind of meeting the students where they were at. Um, I was willing to meet whatever time on Zoom, um, work through the internet crashing, do more on my end. Um, I actually did some of the applications with the students on Zoom, but while using the American internet connection, because it was stronger. Um, and then the students would have to pay for their visas, make their appointments, and then they attended the visa appointments. Um, after they got the visa appointments, we kind of just did all the other things. We booked their flights, um, or they booked their own flights, just kind of um, I feel like I'm reflecting, sorry. Um, so they're, now they're here after they completed the admission process and the visa process. Um, the students are able to work on campus and that helps them have additional funding for um, incrementals or food, anything that students spend money on. So they, most of the students did elect to take a work study job, um, so they're working here. Um, some of the jobs, there's a dog walker, we have campus security assistants, um, library assistants. So whatever jobs are available to all students, the students here are also eligible to apply for. Um, so I worked with the students also to set their classes and majors. Um, this, is, this is a great process. We didn't really, there was no barriers here. Whatever major the students wanted to be, the students were able to elect their own majors. Um, so having that, giving them the opportunity to choose their classes makes more of success, happier students, happier staff. Uh, so they would pick their majors and then they'd meet with their, their advisor. Their advisor would go over, just as any other student, they would talk about what classes they needed, how the program works, and their advisors met with them, help them register for their classes. Um, so for particular needs of the Ukrainian students, I know they're all sitting here, so it's a little weird. Um, but they did need more support than the traditional international student. Um, but that's okay, like that's what I'm here for. I'm here to make sure that everything, every need was met. Um, it was a great idea of the university to have a cohort come. That way they've kind of made their own community here. They have support, they can talk to each other um, about anything that's going on. So I think that was much better than if we just had one Ukraine student here who was figuring it out all on their own. Um, and another thing too though is it's really important to not look at them as the students from Ukraine. They're Duval students. They're international students. They have the same needs as everyone else. They're individuals. So to just kind of take a greater look, treat them as a person, not just a Ukraine student. Um, the other thing that was difficult um, is we had an 18-year-old male that was accepted. Um, most of the other students are 17, but 18-year-old men, there's additional rules with the military. Uh, so that was a very complicated process. We had to send probably about five letters that were all stamped by a registrar. They were male certified um, to allow the military, to allow this 18-year-old male to come here. 
But in the end, it was worth all that work because they did allow him to come here. And he is here studying and had a great life because of his DL degree. Any questions for me? Did any of you want to jump in about how you found out about this opportunity? Led? So our like um, teacher just sent us a link to Google Chat and said you can apply to the university in New York and try this opportunity. And uh, <clears throat> we just come to Zoom uh, with um, admission office. They told us everything, how we can apply or anything. And we just applied. Anyone else? Did you have did you hear it through school? Or was it more was there anything in the news or different social media? Or was it all through your school reaching out and posting the opportunity? Guidance counselors work all over the world like this. <laughs> uh, so just uh, from our perspective, looking and working with everyone, uh, trying to find for this cohort a way to acclimate to university, which for any students is an acclimation. Uh, new culture, new language, and trying to work forward and be supportive of, supportive of that by also encouraging independence so uh, one of the few of the glitches we ran into was just thinking about uh, when dining halls are closed and thinking about how to get around. Uh, we had a fun introduction to Thanksgiving. So uh, also introducing in the holiday. We've had great support from the community. Uh, so from the community, the Ukrainian Cultural Center invited students for a night uh, to really build on that and create those connections. And then we have had some news talking and following some of our students and just um, readers of the newspaper have reached out and wanted to help and help with winter clothing. Um, so one thing to try to get some feedback from our students here is we had a huge snowstorm in November, November, and we had random people in the community reaching out wanting to help with winter clothing and things like that to prepare for that. So uh, throwing the question back on our students, you know, what's that experience been like from a cultural sense getting acclimated to number one, going to university, but then also in a different country and learning US culture? Anyway, let's say the girl of sports, so it wasn't that hard acclimating, but uh, I think uh, since we had our own community in Ukraine, that's it helped a lot. And then for, in terms of on your floor, your residence hall floor, many of you have American roommates, so has that helped? Has there been opportunities to kind of visit around Western New York? with uh, some of the other students. Yeah, it's really nice to have a roommate who is native uh, English speaker because uh, with my roommate, we're friends and we talk a lot and our neighbor, really nice boy, Craven, he helped us a lot. He showed a lot of uh, sites uh, sightseeing we did together, um, a lot of car rides, he showed us nice place to visit, how like New York State is beautiful, and American culture itself. Yeah. There was a Thanksgiving that Creighton had invited everybody to Thanksgiving dinner too. Right? Yes. So Thanksgiving is a U.S. holiday uh, where we just celebrate our arrival in this country and um, I know that all of they, there was a large number of international students that they hosted and invited through their church. Yes, yes, that was wonderful. So it's part of Duville community is trying to reach out and help people feel at home and welcome. Is there specific questions about the process for 
students being admitted and coming here. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, dear students, for sharing your experience. Uh, for now, we don't have like questions from the audience, but I have some questions uh, for you, if you don't mind. Uh, I would like to ask you, like, where are you from? From like what part of Ukraine? Where do you start? I'm from Kyrgyzstan. Good. So I'm from Kherson. Mm -hmm. I'm from Korea. Mm -hmm. I'm from Kherson, and I'm also from Korea. Okay, so like from different parts of Ukraine, and that's wonderful. I'm so happy that you uh, you were able to uh, made this trip, and you are in the United States, and you are pursuing the best education, uh, and a lot of students are now trying to do the same, and uh, we have a, a huge cohort of students who are applying to U.S. universities these days. So you are lucky ones if you are there already. Uh, and I have a question, like, uh, what was the reaction of your family when they heard that you are now a U.S. Uh, like international student and you're going to study in U.S.? Uh, like, what your family... You shocked. Shocked. <laughs> okay. Anything um, else? My, my parents are really grateful for this opportunity and they are so happy for me that I I dream all my life to stand here and here I am. <laughs> Great. My parents are so glad and uh, so appreciated for the duty of the university for this. I might want to share one story about a student who is uh, not with us today, but uh, part of the cohort of the Ukrainian students. He was actually the first student that reached out to us when um, Education USA uh, sent out the message to various high schools that this would be an opportunity. Um, I just happened to be at my computer when uh, his email came in, and so it was almost an immediate response uh, from the university to our student. And um, this was the first student. We had no real process in place uh, at that time, but I was able to talk to he and his parents who were in a, a very difficult, challenging situation because there was missiles that were, were hitting his town. But we were able to um, hold a Zoom call. I did meet his parents. His parents were very, very concerned about his safety and was interested in him to, um, moving to the U.S. to continue his studies. He had been from a high school that specialized in sciences. So the fit to the Uville University was very, very good. Uh, he was interested in coming here. And he was the first student that we accepted into this program. And then from there, I think uh, through social media, um, that's where the message started to um, spread out across Ukraine that this was an opportunity. And once we accepted the first student, uh, we, we seem to get a lot more applications after that. But I really do think that it was word of mouth through the principals at many high schools that shared this opportunity with, uh, with the students that ultimately came here in this cohort. Um, it previously, uh, before we had heard from that student, we had been trying to work through the state universities uh, in Ukraine, uh, but it was very difficult to connect with people because of the internet, as Becky said, uh, was down, Zoom calls were difficult, timing, being able to talk with people was very difficult. But we do have a, a very smooth process now, and uh, we, we would love to have more students come here to the university to join us, because from my perspective as the president of the university, this cohort of students has brought uh, a very um, engaging, live, lively um, uh, atmosphere to the university. It has really helped our entire, not only university community, but our broader community. People have really rallied behind our students to support them. But um, we are learning so much from our students each and every time I talk with them, hear more about their families and what their families are doing, um, but the experience that they're having here as well. So our community is interested and intrigued. It has certainly raised awareness internationally for all of us here um, in Buffalo uh, with that connection. And I, I see as we go forward a greater opportunity for us to have uh, deeper relationships 
with Ukraine as a result of these uh, 11 students that have joined us because uh, I believe this is really just the beginning of an opportunity for us to think about how we can help um, in this effort and then help our, not only our students here, but other students in Ukraine uh, as we uh, think about rebuilding and um, becoming more stable, how our universities can work with schools and universities in Ukraine to, to help with rebuilding as well too. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate your help and your support. And uh, we are always open uh, for any collaboration in Special Education USA Ukraine. So we are glad to uh, uh, have any uh, kind of events and we can share our wonderful students with you, of course, uh, because we have a group of competitive coach club students and we uh, like uh, we are like mentors for them. We help them to uh, conduct all the steps and apply to U.S. universities. So we'll be glad to share like any students if, if uh, you have any opportunities for them. Uh, and uh, we're also very proud of our students, like Ukrainian one, uh, that you are there. And uh, I'm sure that you are like leaders <laughs> and you represent Ukraine. And this is, this is wonderful, guys. So I have a question for you. Like, could you please, like, from the, your point of view, uh, tell about like the first step so you arrived in the, the u.s i'm sure that you were shocked when you heard about this opportunity and that you are now a u.s student uh you're going to study in u.s university so uh after this like process of application and interview like when everything was done and you have your tickets uh, for the plane to united states so you arrived and what so how you studying began so could you just like share this information with us? Um, so <clears throat> my first impression was like everything so different from my country, culture and language. And first, I think a couple of weeks, I was like adapting to new environment. And also, I, w I remember I was really motivated to work because uh, I'm here to study, to get my degree, to develop uh, and and then when uh, was my first lesson, I was so scared because uh, I had a little bit like language barrier still. And uh, when my first day it's ended, I was so so glad that I came here, that I have this opportunity to study here. And uh, now I think everything going really good, and I. So excited for the next semester, for next courses that I'm going to take. Thank you so much. Uh could you please like compare just a bit uh, the studying in Ukraine and studying in US? So what is the difference? I would like to share. I think it's just completely different because here we can choose our courses and also I think the schedule is different a lot because when we were in school we had like seven or eight consecutive lessons and here we have breaks and not a lot of classes so the pressure is very very um I don't know how to say that it's not that hard to accommodate this. Thank you. And what about your favorite subjects? Psychology, totally. So you study all together, right? Or do you different? We have uh, different majors. Mm -hmm. So what like what are you studying? Uh, I'm studying business management and I like it. My major is chemistry. Uh, I really like this subject. <laughs> My major is psychology, and I'm glad that I chose it because uh, psychology lessons are really for me. 
like I enjoy taking them and I look forward to studying more about the subject. My major is psychology as well, and I'm really fascinating about uh, and interesting in courses about sociology and psychology as well. And also, I had opportunity to choose uh, different courses, for example, like drawing or like history of English. That was interesting. Too. I'm a psychology major and uh, sociology and uh, world, world and culture minor. And I really love it. Thank you so much, Kay. The pictures are we have nursing, chemistry, exercise science. So some of the students that could be with us. So everybody's, you know, there may be two in a major, but uh, it's kind of across the board. So that is a great experience for our university. So there's a lot of different. Uh, interactions of learning with each other and from each other. So maybe I could just jump in and say the first, um, because these are all first time in college students, they're all entering in different majors, but many of them will take very similar classes because we have a curriculum of general education. So the courses such as art and history and English are courses that are part of our liberal arts uh, curriculum. Once the students complete those um, 30 hours, uh, credit hours of uh, liberal education, liberal arts education, uh, then they will spend more time in their majors. But we have just completed our first semester. Last week was their um, first uh, final exam week for them. Uh, they've all survived. They've all done very, very well this semester. One of the things that I have noticed about this group of students in particular is how um, hard they push themselves to succeed academically. They're very, very serious students. Uh, while they do uh, engage in activities across the campus, they, um, they're they very busy studying. They put a lot of time and effort into their studies. And uh, as a result, it has really shown and they've done very well this semester. Uh, we hope that continues as they go forward through their degree programs. Uh, but maybe the students could share with you some of the activities that they've engaged in, things that they like here at the university that maybe are different from what they experienced um, in their high schools in Ukraine. Um, it was mentioned earlier that there's a, there are, is more free time. It's not as structured, uh, but one of the things that as a university that we do try to support our students is to have activities, uh, both recreation and wellness and health activities so that our students stay healthy um, and are able to um, uh, feel um, mentally, physically, spiritually um, in good health in order to succeed in school. So maybe some of our students can talk about these early experiences they had uh, once they arrived at the university. I think oh, one of the most important things that we have here is uh, wellness lodge and uh, like uh, mental health. It's really important not for only like Ukrainian students, but for all students in general, because uh, some of them have like troubles in uh, the school, with classes, or the stress, or the anxiety. And this is really good that we can talk to somebody to share our like problems and emotions with. Because for me, uh, adaptation was a little bit hard and after war it's a lot of going on and it that was really important for me to talk to somebody to share my uh, what's going on inside of me. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Go ahead, <laughs> She said to me. Well, then for your jobs, I know with the bad rope that uh, Irma is always very positive about the work that you guys are doing and, you know, being able to have some different jobs on campus uh, to do, you meet different people, meet different staff and uh, get paid for it. So I've heard, you know, very positive things from um, Irma. Uh, is anybody a pet sitter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can remember who else was. 
So uh, Anastasia, we have two mascots for St. Bernard's who are large dogs. And if Anastasia, if you could share a little bit about that experience, because it's always fun to watch you guys. It's my favorite thing, I think. Um, before I became uh, the same sitter, so I got the position, I was uh, always visiting dogs uh, and just spending time with them. And I'm really grateful to work with them and spend even more time with the dogs. They're my favorite thing. Like, I could spend hours with them, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> So we have dogs that are here that really, I mean, everybody gravitates towards, and it's part of kind of that wellness center of it. And it's just really uh, exciting to see what different students are walking around campus and then when the dogs recognize them as they walk by. So it's a great kind of welcome and cohesiveness that creates that feeling of community. It's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that you have this opportunity to stay healthy there and you have uh, the opportunity to participate in different events except of studying, of course, like extracurricular one. So I think like the, um, this, I don't know, like how do you call it, it's like a kind of project when you have to sit with pets or it's just like additional like volunteering or what is it, like, how do you call it? Is it like volunteering that you do, or what is it? It's uh, their jobs. So mm -hmm. their actual paid uh, jobs, which helps the students earn some spending money, just as students around the world, you know, for act social activities or food or whatnot. Some of our students have also joined our athletic teams, recreation teams here on campus as well. And again, this is a nice outlet, extracurricular activities for our students too. Anyone want to talk about that? Yeah, I was part of the DVL tennis team. And I'm really excited for upcoming season in January. So, yeah. So we have two of the tennis team. And one student on cross country. Yes. Is there any other athletic teams? So we had the one student who's on the cross country team was talking about how the team went to Virginia Beach, Virginia, and it was a beach, and it was just a great opportunity to see more of the country and kind of have that team component as well uh, with competing. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. And I would like to ask you guys, like, how your day usually looks like. So you spend a lot of time um, on your lessons, like studying. And what do you do after that? So, like, typical day of a student of Duville University. My typical day is uh, I have to uh, waking up at 7 a.m. I'm going to lift first. Uh, this is like a practice for athletes when we working with weights and our muscles. Then uh, I'm going back to my dorms. I'm showering, breakfast, getting ready for my classes. Then I have classes from 9 to I think 2 p.m. Then I have lunch. Then I'm spending my time on um, homework or anything that assignments I have to do. Then I have practice from uh, four thirty till uh, six sometimes to five five thirty. And then I'm showering and continue to work and study hard. Anyone else? How do the labs work for chemistry? Are you in lab quite a bit for your major? That might be a little bit different than other students. Mm, uh, I think lab is still uh, very interesting. Um, it's new for me. What does your day look like? Mm, uh, I. Uh, I wake up at uh, 
8 p.m. Uh, my classes are usually uh, start at uh, 9 um, from, from 9 uh, to um, Morning p.m. and uh, after that uh, I uh, do my homework. That also looks good. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, guys, maybe Vlad and Milana, yeah. Mm -hmm. My day started at 9 a.m. because I have classes uh, usually at 10:30. Uh, uh, after my first class, I go and go have lunch, and then um, I have my work studies and work at my room. It's so fantastic for me, and uh, now I to work in my room during the break. And um, after my work studies, I do my homework. It's. Um, Mm, take uh, much, not much time, and that I relax. Thank you so much. What about you? I usually wake up like early morning, seven thirty, because I have class at eight. Um, after early classes. Um, I just go to lunch and um, go to my other classes. And after all my classes, I spend some time with my friends. And before sleep, I usually just study and do my homework. That's wonderful, guys. I'm so happy for you, really. So maybe oh. right now you're a bit scared and afraid of this process, but I'm sure you will be like proud of yourself when you uh, finish this uh, like education and you obtain your degree uh and i have like about two questions for you like just like one by one you know so the first uh what is your favorite scene uh in the state where you live right now so like just one scene just to share with our uh, students and viewers and guests i think it's people here they are all so nice and uh, supportive. I think the same thing, but um, <clears throat> I think the same thing. But also, I love um, culture and study. Yes. Mm, my favorite. Uh, my favorite thing about New York State is people, the community, it's really warm and um, warm community, uh, also nature, because I'm really excited about snow. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people are scared of snowstorm because it's a lot of troubles and all this not pleasant stuff. But in Ukraine, in my area, we don't have a lot of snow, so I'm really excited for for holidays, for Christmas, and yeah. Uh, I really like uh, um, the culture and uh, the American people who are always ready to help. Uh, I love the diversity of the community and also uh, the diversity of their food. There's so much to try and so many people to meet. They're just so different from you and it's fascinating. Thank you so much, guys. Like, you know, uh, I'm so excited about you and it seems that I am studying there, like not you. Uh, I know, but I'm so happy. Uh, but that's great uh, that you share your uh, ideas and thoughts. And actually, maybe the last question, yeah, for our meeting today, um, I would like to ask you to share one piece of advice for future students who uh, right now are in this process of application, of writing essays, of um, preparing for tests so what would you advise for these students like again maybe one by one we can do it vice versa 
if you don't mind. And I would like to ask our speakers to like finish this question uh, with their pieces of advice, like from the admission office, uh, and uh, like what what would what uh, you would advise for our students? I would say believe in yourself because uh, at the start when I heard that there's only ten people who are coming here, I didn't really believe in myself, but my parents did, and they supported me all the way. And I think believing in yourself is the most important thing. And, oh. <laughs> and also, I think uh, just don't be scared about uh, trying new things. So, yeah. Uh, I agree with uh, Anastasia. Uh, I think uh, impossible is possible. Um, my piece of advice will be study hard, believe in yourself, do not uh, be scared to make mistakes or ask questions, and just live in your life and enjoy your life and be grateful for everything that you have and uh, dream big. I think uh, you need to try improve your English every day and study hard for this. Uh, my first piece of advice is to keep open communication. Check your emails, like check your phone calls, um, respond to emails. And there really is no such thing as a stupid question or a dumb question. Um, ask any question, it's better to have the answer than to assume and be correct. And no one is ever aggravated if you ask questions. That's a good thing, it shows you're engaged, it shows that you want to be here. And, and I think I would add, um, I think they're all wonderful pieces of advice for students. I think the one thing that I would add to that is um, come forward with any concerns, questions that you have at uh, any part of the process along the way. Um, you know, we are here for our students and engage, engage in all the opportunities that are available. It's a limited amount of time that you're going to be here. So take advantage of everything that the university as well as the community has to offer because uh, we see this as a huge, huge benefit not only to our students but to our community as well and we love the engagement and love to be uh, with our students from not only Ukraine but from all around the world because we learn so much. Uh, but we can't do that unless they're engaged. So get involved and try new things. Uh, that would be my uh, piece of advice as well too. And the last thing I would add to that is just really echoing everyone else, which is the questions. So asking questions, asking questions or sharing in class. Uh, we do have a first year experience class and I spoke with most of, them, most of them this year. And it was really nice when some of the students here as well as other international students brought up different perspectives because part of why we're at university is that diversity of thought and sharing. So please, you know, please speak up and feel confident in yourself to start those discussions. It's really a great way for you to learn, but also for all of us to learn from you because that's what our global education is about. And I, you know, want to commend all of our students and their families for their bravery in coming here and trusting us and then sharing. You know, because it's great. they're all wonderful and it's wonderful to hear uh, fun and different facts. Thank you so much. We, by the way, we have this nice background. If you can see it, I'm not sure, like blue and yellow flag behind us, <laughs> like on the screen. Uh, and I would like to say thank you for hosting our students, for helping Ukrainian people and for being our friends. I'm sure that we are going to have more and more uh, events uh, online, maybe in person someday. And of course, we would like to invite you to our country after we win the war. And uh, I wish our students uh, in the United States uh, to get only the best mark. Thank you for joining us today. For, thank you for this wonderful presentation and sharing your ideas and experience. Uh, and uh, I invite everyone, all our viewers and guests, to join our next Thursday lecture uh, next week. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.